Good morning ladies and welcome to our third online women's breakfast in the parish of Orford and Loxwood. I know some of you were hoping to meet together in person again by now, particularly with the guests we have in store this time, but that's still not possible. Although I know for a fact that you're going to love what's coming up. We've got a cookery slot with Sharon, our Orford Church Warden. Kim, who spoke for our first virtual breakfast, is going to share a healthy smoothie recipe with us. Lauren, who got married a week ago today, huge congratulations to you and Steve, is going to share a bit about what brought her to our church and what God's been doing in her life recently. Liz Fielden, a local Pilates instructor, will lead us through a five minute workout. And Fiona Hendley, a friend of Ruth's, who we also heard from in our April breakfast online, will speak to us about peace, a much needed message at this time, I think you'll agree, before joining her husband, Paul Jones, in a song as we think through what we've heard. We've got a lot to get through, so let's kick off without further ado. If you haven't yet got any breakfast to enjoy as you watch, why not pause the video now and go fetch whatever you fancy. Kim and Sharon are going to give us some inspiration for both food and drink if you're up for making something alongside them now. Over to them. Good morning, ladies. This morning I'm going to show you how to make a berry and spinach smoothie. Now I know that sounds a bit disgusting but actually it's delicious and refreshing and so let me show you what I put in it. So we've got a handful of spinach, a handful of kale, a handful of almonds, one apple, a handful of frozen berries and one frozen banana. I also like to put some raw cacao in the smoothie and a little bit of flaxseed oil. So it's really easy to make. You do need a blender of some sort. I use a Nutribullet but I'm sure whatever you have will work. ingredients in the bowl and we're now ready to whiz them all up so let's do it mm, it's really lovely really refreshing and it's a great way to start the day to give you energy and a clear mind so I hope you enjoy. Bye! Good morning everybody and welcome to the cookery section of Women's Breakfast. Now uh, in this hot weather it's far too hot to think about cooked breakfast and one of our family favourites is granola. So what I'm going to talk you through this morning is how to make homemade granola. Well you may ask why should we make granola when we can buy it in a packet? One very important reason is that if you're conscious of salt or sugar content, if you make it yourself, you can control those two things. Secondly, it's delicious and it tastes much nicer than what you'll get in a packet. And thirdly, it makes your house smell heavenly. So, off we go. I'm going to talk you through a very simple way of doing it. No skill at all is required in this apart from having your set of ingredients ready and the time to do it. So first of all, you start with your base, uh, which is always uh, oats. So whatever oats you have in the house, your favorite oats, you do three to four cups. This is the equivalent of a cup. So three to four cups. And I think I'm probably only gonna get three out of this. Three cups of oats. Then next stage is to add some nuts. 
So I'm going to add some blanched hazelnuts, but any nut of your choice will be fine. So I'm going to add half a cup of those, maybe a bit more, and one cup of, I've got mixed seeds here, any seeds will do, um, sesame seeds, what else is in here? Um, oh, I don't know what else is in here, anyway, <laughs> mixed seeds, right, in they go, voila, and then I like sesame seeds, so I'm going to add a little bit of those in as well. Really, you just add whatever takes your fancy. So those are the dry ingredients. Um, you might like some dried fruit in your um, cereal. Every recipe I've come across from granola says, add the fruit and cook it in the oven. If you do that, well, basically the fruit burns. So I would suggest you don't add dried fruit until you've actually uh, finished cooking the granola at the end of the process. So now you need, after that, to add some oil. Um, a lot of recipes like to use uh, coconut oil. That's fine if you like the flavour. Uh, it has quite a strong flavour. It's full of nutrients, but it's also 100% saturated fat. So if you're watching your diet, I would suggest you use some form of um, organic oil that doesn't have a strong taste. So today I'm using uh, grape, grape seed. And for this, you need uh, two to three tablespoons. So that's my tablespoon measure. And as I've used quite a lot of that, so I'm gonna add three in there. And then after that, um, any form of sweetener, except as long as it's not white refined sugar. So my favorites are either honey or maple syrup. So today I'm going to use maple syrup and I'm going to use two of those. But sweeten to your taste and according to your dietary needs. And then the tiniest pinch of sugar goes in. Oops, that's far too much. I'm going to get rid of a little bit of that. Just a little pinch in there. Salt. Sorry, salt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Roger. Salt. And then I need to put in some vanilla essence, surprisingly enough. And we'll have a half teaspoon of that. And that adds a nice extra flavour. So then we give it a good stir. And you can see that the, the dry ingredients are beginning to pick up and bind with the oil and the other things that I've added. Mm, it's beginning to smell nice already from the maple syrup. And then, once you've given it a thorough stir, you need to layer it out on as big a baking tray as you can find that's lined with parchment paper or something like um, non-stick foil. And I'll stick it in here. And flatten it out so it covers the entire tray and it should go into an oven of 150 degrees centigrade um, probably for about 20 minutes so check after 10 see what it's like you want it to be um, quite nice and crisp but you don't want the nuts to start to burn. Pop that in here, put it in at the high level. After 10 minutes, I like to just check it and turn it over so that um, just it gets a nice even brown sort of texture to it. The other thing I often do is leave it in the oven with the oven off so the mixture dehydrates completely. So that's all for now, and I'll be back at the end of 20 minutes. Just check on the granola. Take it out. Mm, it smells wonderful. And I'm going to add a half a cup 
of uh, dried cranberry, but you might like that raisins or apricots or whatever to your taste. So I'm gonna stir that round a bit and then it's still too hot to pack up. So just gonna let that cool right down and then it's important to store it in airtight containers. So you can either go into a Tupperware box like that or a, um, something slightly bigger, or these little jars are great, a bigger jar than that obviously for this amount, but they're great for it. And it'll last for a good couple of weeks. However, in my experience, you'll be lucky if it lasts that long, especially if you have hungry young children or young teenagers in the house. So that's all for our breakfast today. Thank you. Thanks for that ladies and Roger too, another husband cameraman like Kevin last time and with a key correction. The salt sugar mistake is a classic isn't it? I know lots of people who have used it to play some nasty April Fool's tricks on each other. Well now that we've had our physical appetites wet let's listen to Fiona's message and see if it doesn't wet our spiritual appetites too. Before I hand over let me pray. We read the following in 3 John 1 verse 2. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. So Father, as we enjoy good food being made, listen to beautiful music, and later take part in physical activity, we thank you that you are a God who cares about our whole selves, mind, body and spirit. We pray that you would help us to take care of ourselves and one another. Thank you for this group of women watching now. We pray that we would be able to meet all together in person before long and that until then we would still support and encourage one another as we seek to walk with you. In Matthew 4 verse 4, Jesus said, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So please feed us now with your word, Lord. Give us ears to hear what you would like to say to each one of us this morning, we pray. Amen. Oh, hello. Lovely to be with you on this breakfast. Thank you, Ellie, so much for inviting me to be with you. And uh, thank you, dear Ruth, for introducing us. And, uh, you know, I watched one of the breakfasts recently and I thought, how lovely. What a lovely thing to be part of. So thank you. Well, in these few moments, I just wanted to talk to you about peace. Peace on the inside. It's something I crave. It's, the, it's what the Bible actually says that we should do, that we should crave peace. And don't we need it? I don't know about you, but being peaceful on the inside is so important to me. I don't want to live all scribbled on, as I call it, on the inside. I don't want to live in fear and anxiety and have that nervousness all the time and that worry. You know, I grew up in a home where, you know, we just didn't know about God's peace, because God has a peace. His peace is supernatural. His peace is not like the world's peace. You know, you can sit down and have a cup of tea and have a chat with a friend or watch your favorite television program or read a lovely book. And for that time, maybe you've got some peace. But you know, when you finish that cup of tea, all the things that you might have been anxious about before are still there, aren't they? God has a peace that we can have on the inside of us, a supernatural peace that's, that's there no matter what. And I mean, look at the state of the world. Oh, it's been horrible, hasn't it? I do hope that you and your family have been all right. Uh, it's just been a terrible time and it's not really over, is it? The world is in a mess. And then it's not just what we have to hear about going on in the world, we all have things to deal with in our lives. You know, you may be dealing with some stuff right now in your life and things can be tricky. Attacks can come. How do you stay peaceful when there's all sorts of things to deal with? And that has been always my desire. Well, you know, in my early 20s, I came to know this loving Heavenly Father. Before I knew him, there was no way I could know God's peace. We have to first come to him and know him and know his love and how much of a wonderful father he is before we can know his peace and experience that. Well, you know, for years I was in the theatre and worked um, in many 
plays and shows and things and I was working at the Royal National Theatre in my early 20s and I was working with a very handsome man who just happens to be my husband to this day, <laughs> um, Paul, and we were falling in love and we were playing in a show that you just might have heard of. The show uh, was called Guys and Dolls and we were having a wonderful time. Well during that time you know we talked about do you believe in God? Well God wasn't really in our lives at all although I thought I was a Christian. Paul had been an atheist, now he wasn't. But we got a telephone call from someone you just might have heard of. His name was, well it still is, Cliff Richard. <laughs> and he said, would you like to come and hear a minister called Luis Palau? He's going to be speaking at White City Football Stadium. He's going to be bringing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, Cliff Richard had called us. We were sort of a bit wowed by that. And we went. Well, I remember it was a beautiful summer's evening. And I remember we had to park our car a long way from the stadium because so many people were going. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of people were walking towards the stadium. And I remember saying to Paul as we, we were walking hand in hand, I said, do this many people want to know about God? Was amazing to me. We got into the stadium and we couldn't get anywhere near the front. We had to sit right up at the top. Well, it was an amazing evening. The choir began to sing, which was just glorious. Cliff Richard spoke a little bit and then Luis Palau got up and started speaking about God's love for every human being on the face of this earth. That it's his love is unconditional towards us all and he's longing for us all to turn to him. And I knew in my heart, though I believed God existed, I didn't know him. Luis Palau said he loves us so much. He sent his only son, Jesus, to die on a cross for us, to take away our shame, our guilt, our sorrow, our pain and our lack of peace. I was amazed. And he finished by saying, would you like to know this Jesus, this saviour? who's come for you. And I thought, yes, I, I do. I really, really do. And he led us all in a prayer at the end and Paul and I, with tears were pouring down our faces, tears of joy, as we asked Jesus to forgive us and to come into our hearts and fill us with his unconditional love and his joy and his peace. And from that time, we've known him, the Lord, intimately. Every day when we get up, all these years later, we still spend time in the Bible in the morning and pray about everything in our lives. And you know, that keeps us peaceful. There's a wonderful scripture in the Bible, in Isaiah, chapter 26 and verse 3, and I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, and it says this, you, and it's talking about God, you will guard him or her, and keep him in perfect and constant peace, whose mind, both its inclination and its character, is stayed on you, because he commits himself to you, leans on you, and hopes confidently in you. Some translations say, because he trusts in you. And you know, when you come to God and you you know how lovely he is and how faithful he is and how kind. He'll never leave us, never forsake us. You know, you begin to trust him. And you know, that keeps you peaceful. It keeps you very peaceful because you trust him, because you stay your mind on him. I wanted to give you um, an example of a very difficult situation that I faced where God's peace came and, and helped actually my mother and I, I was in the bank one day and my mobile went off, it was my mother. She told me she'd been for tests and she was going to have to have a very serious operation. And I was really shocked. Uh, she had to have it very quickly. And you know, when I came off the phone, I felt no peace at all. I mean, I've been fine that day but I lost every bit of peace. I felt angry. I didn't want my mother suffering this. Of course, I, I was 
kind to her on the phone and I said, you know, look, you know, we'll be praying for you, Mom, and I, I'm coming over and I'll call you again. But I had to get to my car. And as I walked through the town, I began to pray over every single bit of this situation that my mother was going to go through, for the operation to go perfectly, for her to be all right. And I was just praying and praying. You know, I'd gone from really angry, but as I began to pray, calm started coming into my heart. I know this great God, that even in a, a really horrid situation like that, he wasn't going to leave us. He wasn't going to forsake us. By the time I'd got to my car, I was feeling a little bit more that I could deal with this situation. Of course, I went to see my mother and then, you know, the operation was coming. Well, that night, I woke up and I felt really strongly I wanted to pray some more. And I got up and I was walking about and praying for my mother. Again, I was praying for the surgeon. I was praying for everything that would go on for my mum to come through this safely and victoriously. Well, I suddenly remembered in the Bible how the Lord says that he will fight our battles for us. You know, what was happening as I was keeping my mind stayed on him in this very difficult situation. And I remembered, yes, you will fight this battle for us. When you're facing a situation that is just so overwhelming, you know, God will fight your battles for you. And I began to give the situation to God completely, just saying, Father, I can't deal with this. My mother can't deal with us. This is too big. This is such a huge operation. Would you fight this for us? And I began to declare over my mother, Jesus is Lord over my dear mother. Jesus Christ, you are Lord over us. We, we both love you. All my family are Christians. Jesus Christ, you are Lord over this situation. Well, I have to tell you in the morning I called my mom and um, I said, are you all right? And she said, well, something happened in the night. I said, what happened? She said, well. I woke up, I was very fearful, and I got up to, to, to pray, but all of a sudden, this peace filled me. I mean, just filled my heart and my mind. She said, it's that peace that the Bible talks about, the peace of God that passes all understanding. She said, I can only tell you, I have absolutely no fear whatsoever about this operation, none whatsoever. Well, that remained. My mother went into hospital and I can honestly tell you it was like she was going to the hairdressers. She was so calm. She was so peaceful. You know, even when she went down to the operating theatre, you know, she was waving goodbye to us. She said, don't forget to have something to eat, she said to my brother and I. You know, when she came out of that operation, it had gone brilliantly. Everything had gone so well. My mother didn't even need pain medicine after the operation. It was a supernatural peace she had. It was extraordinary. In very tricky situations, we have to stay our minds on God. Come to God first of all, and then keep our minds on him by reading his Bible, his words, praying, having fellowship with other lovely Christians and watching lovely breakfasts like this. You know, I want to uh, leave you now with another scripture, which I know will bless you because it's beautiful. It's from Philippians chapter four, starting at verse six. And it says these lovely words, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God and God's peace shall be yours. That peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. He loves you. We need to come to him and then stay close to him and keep our minds on all that he is. God bless you. Hi. Well, the song that we're going to do is one that I 
first heard on a recording made in 1936 by Blind Roosevelt Graves and his brother Uroy. There are many, many different versions of this song extant in the world today. And uh, what Blind Roosevelt called it was, woke up this morning with my mind on Jesus. However, we've renamed it for our version, Resting on Jesus. <laughs> Woke up this morning with my mind Resting on Jesus Woke up this morning with my mind Resting on Jesus Woke up this morning with my mind Resting on Jesus Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah there's no better way to live than with your mind. Resting on Jesus. No better way to live than with your mind. Resting on Jesus. No, there's no better way to live than with your mind. Resting on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 He'll keep you in perfect peace when your mind is resting on Jesus. Perfect peace when your mind is resting on Jesus. Perfect peace when your mind is resting on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you so much, Paul and Fiona, for giving your time, energy and love in sharing with us today. It's such a treat to watch you sing together at the end there. And I would love to be able to play the harmonica as well as you, Paul. What a gift. I'm sure I had one as a kid, but like any instrument in the wrong hands, it's every parent's nightmare. And Fiona's story of peace in the midst of a very anxious time is so encouraging, isn't it? I remember Kim sharing with our youth group about a similar feeling, even as her dad died, describing it as being in the eye of the hurricane, the situation beyond her control swirling all around, but a deep inner sense of calm in spite of it all. I don't know about you, but I definitely want more of that. Well, another way that some people seek calm in life is through exercise, it's such a tricky one because I know that I've always been recommended it as one of the main ways to self-care since my psychosis four years ago. But when you're not in the right headspace, you don't feel like exercise, so it can be a real effort. No judgment if you don't fancy this next bit, therefore, but Pilates is the only activity I've kept up over Zoom in lockdown, and I have really found it helpful in strengthening my core and back in a very careful way. I'd really recommend it to any of you who haven't yet given it a go. Liz is running Pilates classes via Zoom currently, but hoping to be back in North Hall in Loxwood and Whisper Green Village Hall come September. So keep checking her website if you're interested. It's on the screen now. Over to Liz. Hi, so I'm gonna do a really short five minute Pilates inspired workout for you. Um, it's quite gentle, so if you're not used to exercising, just give it a go anyway. Do the bits that you can do, and if anything feels like too much, then leave it out. Uh, we're going to work on our hands and knees, so on all fours like this. Um, I know some people have problems with their knees, so if you do, you can grab a towel if you want to, to kneel on like this, just to give you a bit more padding, or a small cushion, not too fat because you don't want to wobble, um, and kneel on that. And then if you struggle with your wrists, 
you want to spread your fingers really wide and spread the fingertip, uh, press the fingertips down into the mat so that you go a bit light under the wrist here. But if that doesn't help, you can go up on your knuckles if that feels more comfortable to you. Or again, you can grab a small towel and just fold it quite narrow like this and rest the heel of your hand on it. So fingertips down on the mat, heel of the hand on the towel so that it's slightly lifted and that can take the pressure out of the uh, wrists for you. Okay, so if you want to come down onto the mat, we start in a nice square position here. Hips are over the knees, shoulders are over the wrists, so don't push the weight back like this. And we're going to start with a cat stretch. So as you breathe out, tuck your tailbone under, arch your spine up to the ceiling, look back towards the front of the thighs. And then breathe in, untuck your tailbone, let the back drop down, lift your eye line slightly. And again, so working with your breath, breathe out, arch the spine up, rounding up into a cat stretch. And then breathe in and lengthen. And we're trying to get movement right through the whole length of the spine, not just in the upper back, but in the lower back as well. Last one now, rounding up, and then breathe in and lengthen away. Okay, come back to your starting position. So for this, we send the tailbone long behind, the crown of the head long in front, and your belly button is connected to your spine, so you're not sinking down into your lower back. You draw up a little. I want you to take your right hand, lift it, thread it through behind your left wrist. Take your right shoulder down to the mat, and then press away to lift up again and reach wide with that right arm. So we're trying to get a rotation through the spine. So you're twisting through the waist, turning the shoulders and the hips stay more or less where they are. Working with your breath again, so you breathe out to thread the arm through. And then breathe in as you push back up and send that arm wide. That's three on that side, let's swap to the other side. So take your left hand now, thread it through behind your right wrist. Rotating down just as far as you can go. Open, lift, let the chest open. And again, breathing out to thread through. Breathe in as you push away and open wide. And one more. And push up and open wide. Lovely. Push yourself up onto your knees now, just kneeling tall. We're just gonna roll out the shoulders. Try and open the chest a little bit. And then I want you to just breathe in, take the right arm up overhead and side bend all the way over. And then take that arm down and we'll do the same with the left arm. So breathe in, take it tall and side bend over. Breathe out and lower down. Just clasp your hands behind your back, one on top of the other, and we're gonna breathe in and press the front of the hips forwards as you slide your hands down. So take a breath in, reach the arms long, press those hips forwards, and just lift your breastbone a little bit. So you really open the chest, and then release. Okay, come back down onto all fours. Find that nice square position again, make sure you're not sinking back into your hips. Okay, we're going to take the right leg, keep the knee bent, we're going to lift it so it comes up to a right angle like this. So if you put your weight into the left knee, we're going to press that leg up and up and up. And make sure your lower back doesn't drop down. Let's swap to the other leg now. We press the knee up and up. So it's your heel pressing up to the ceiling. Let's do one more on each leg. Up, and last set on the other leg. You can spend longer than on this. If you're doing this at home, you can slow it down. We've only got five minutes. Okay, we're gonna work the arms now. So starting with your right hand, you're gonna breathe in and lengthen the arm away. Try and bring it up next to your ear if you can, and then rest it down and switch to your left arm. Breathe in, lengthen, reach it out in front, keep your eyes looking down towards the mat, don't be tempted to look up. Keep that belly button connected to your spine. One 
one more on each arm. And then you can either work the legs on their own. So we send one leg out long behind, keep it in line with the spine, keep that belly button connected. And then rest down and send the other, oh, other leg out long. Or if you want to, just challenge yourself a little bit more. You can do the arm and the leg together. So opposite sides. I'm doing my right arm on my left leg, out in a nice long line, and rest down. And then left arm, right leg. And again. So if this feels too much, just do the legs on their own. That's absolutely fine. Just work on keeping this lower back nice and long. Don't let it drop down. One more on each side. Okay, and then just to finish, this is gonna work your whole body. Keep your knees and feet together and just tuck your toes under. I want you to take a breath in and as you breathe out, just float your knees. They're gonna hover just a little bit above the mat. Take a breath in here to hold it. Push the mat away with your hands and then rest down. And again, so breathe out, float the knees. If you want to challenge yourself a bit more here, you can lift one foot and rest down and then lift the other foot and rest down. And the knees go down. Let's do one more. Breathe out, float the knees up, float one foot. You don't have to do the foot floats if you don't want to, just keep your knees hovering. And then rest the knees down. And then if you're comfortable with this, sit back onto your heels, let the arms stretch out in front and your head drop down in between. If you're not comfortable sitting back on your heels, just come into a softened position with the spine. So up on all fours, but let the tailbone just round under a little bit so the lower back releases. And then from here, just roll out those wrists just to release them. And there you go, there's your little five minute session. It's amazing how simple some exercises look, but how tricky they are when you actually try them, especially if you do several reps. Right, from cat curls to our newlywed Lauren. After her testimony, there'll be a compilation of videos sent to me by various regulars to our breakfasts, sharing our key verse for this time, which Fiona referred to in her talk. It's from Isaiah chapter 26, verse three. And it says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So my prayer for each of you this week is that you would keep your mind resting on Jesus as Paul and Fiona sang in that lovely song. It takes effort every day. I fail often, but he is faithful. And if we come to him humbly, trusting in Jesus, his ears are attentive to our prayers. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. See you in October. We'll be in touch with details nearer the time. Do get in touch if you want to be added to our church mailing list using the address on the screen now. Over to Lauren. Hello everyone and uh, thank you to Ellie for inviting me to take part in this women's breakfast. My name is Lauren Hursthouse and uh, that has changed recently as I married my husband Steve at the weekend. Um, it was a service held at St Nicholas Church in Alfold and uh, Rev Greg married us. And despite the ongoing Covid situation, uh, we had a wonderful day uh, with close friends and family and we felt very blessed. Um, and we're also expecting our first child in January, which we're very much looking forward to. So I'm going to share a little bit about me and uh, my journey with God and uh, Christianity uh, this year. Um, I'll start with what brought me to Loxwood. I first found out about Loxwood as a place that existed in January 2019 on New Year's Day as I was feeling a little delicate after some drinks uh, on New Year's Eve 
and I wanted a nice leisurely walk just to get some fresh air and um, clear my head. And Google very helpfully told me about the Way and Aran Canal Trust. Um, I was living in Horsham at the time and uh, it wasn't uh, too far of a journey so um, I went out with uh, my uh, sisters and we went for a walk and I fell quite strongly uh, in love with the village and at the time I was uh, in the process of moving house and hadn't found uh, a place to live yet and there was uh, an opportunity to purchase a house in the village so then six months later I moved in and, and uh, there were a few hiccups along the way um, uh, with the buying process I think as is expected with uh, most house uh, sales and purchases um, and I all throughout the top the six months of um, solicitors and I felt a very strong compulsion that it was going to happen and that uh, I was going to live in Loxwood um, and I'd never never been to Loxwood prior to um, the walk on New Year's Day and I didn't know anybody but I just felt very strongly that that was where I needed to be and, and where I needed to live and, and move to and, and I started to pray a lot during that time um, asking for help um, and that was quite a significant point uh, for me and having trust and faith that it would happen um, and then a week after I moved in which was June 2019 I met my now husband Steve uh, so I don't really have many memories of Loxwood without Steve because uh, you could say that once we'd met we've been inseparable um, ever since ever since so then uh, Steve and I got to know village and we spent our first Christmas together and we went to Alfold Church on uh, Christmas Day for the Christmas Day service um, in, at the end of uh, 2019 and we met uh, Rev Greg for the first time and we received a blessing and uh, as we were leaving we were made aware of the Alpha course and after the service uh, I asked Steve if it was something he was interested in doing and we agreed that we would uh, do this do this together. We also um, picked up a copy of the book The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel and, and started to read that as well. Um, so we joined we joined Alpha um, in the January and uh, met other people in the village and, and the neighbouring villages and had an opportunity to uh, ask lots of questions and um, interact and just a little bit about me so in terms of my, my background I have a science background and I work in the clinical trial industry and I think it's fair to say that even though I was christened and I went to Sunday school and we as a family or with grandparents would go to church very occasionally. Um, <clears throat> I neglected my faith um, and I feel that was mostly driven by me believing at the time there was a conflict between science and Christianity and that they were opposed to one another, uh, which is not what I believe now. Um, however, I'd always felt a sense of spirituality um, and that I was searching for something um, in terms of answers to life and why we're here. And uh, during Alpha, 
I started to learn in detail about the Bible and it all made sense to me like it hadn't it, like it hadn't before and uh, Greg and Ellie were very open and encouraging of questions and uh, Steve and I met quite a f yeah, as I said met quite a few people um, which was great getting to know people um, and hear other people's experiences of how they'd come to faith so it was a really worthwhile course um, and after Alpha, um, we were invited to uh, uh, start um, the Pilgrim Group uh, Bible Study at the Rectory. And this was in March time, and we managed to of this year, and we managed to go to one of those um, before lockdown started. And Rev Greg has persevered, and he quickly converted the meetings to um, online Zoom calls. Um, and although it can never replace a face-to-face -face experience, the Zoom calls work well and everyone has a chance, uh, like I said already, um, to ask questions and interact. And it's a great way of uh, maintaining a sense of community and connection during lockdown and getting to know your fellow Christians Personally, I think Greg and Ellie have really gone above and beyond to keep the momentum going with the online services and men's and women's breakfasts. And they really have been an inspiration and a lifeline to the church community. Steve and I have also taken part uh, in the Christianity Explored course, which Greg ran online for the first time. Um, for those that aren't familiar with the course, it's based on Mark's gospel and over several weeks you read and learn about the identity, uh, mission, teachings and death of Jesus through Mark's eyes. And one thing that struck me whilst reading Mark's gospel was the grace of God. Um, this is not something I had understood before and... Um, grace is the love and mercy given to us by God because God desires us to have it, not necessarily because of anything we have done to earn it. And to end, I'd like to say that I'm looking forward to learning uh, and growing on my walk with God and developing my fellowship with God. Thank you for listening.